to Bob Copeland Field. Steve and Val here with you. We are going to talk some sports here this afternoon. And we didn't get a chance to do the show last week, Val. And, you know, you're like, hey, I could talk for three hours. And I said, yeah, that's probably every week. But uh, there is a lot to talk about. There's a lot of stuff going on, obviously, with, uh, you know, we're winding down on our spring sports seasons. But we also had the sectional realignments that came out. Uh, we were going to talk about those last week, but uh, we haven't talked about those yet. So, anyway, first off, how are you? Let's start off with a trivia question, Steve. There are two girls in the state in softball who have a batting average over 700. Name I know them. one. I know one, Emma Howdeshell. That's one. Who's the and other? And I'm, I'm guessing Haley Kripe. That is correct. I mean, Emma Howdeshell and Haley Kripe are number one and number two in the state in batting average. It's been that kind of softball season. We are blessed to have a lot of great softball players in the area, and those two are just symbolic of all the good softball players we have. It doesn't look like Haley's going to lead the state in home runs again. She she only has 11, and there's a girl from Cord in Central that has 19. But Yeah. Uh, do you think that uh, people are pitching around her a little bit or just uh, just not maybe getting as, as many good pitches as she's gotten in the past? I got it sounds like also got the sense of Pioneers just faced a lot of good pitching. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I, yeah. I don't think that – I don't think she's going to fret too much, right, if she's not the, the leader in that because, uh, you know, she's such a team first person anyway. Yeah, that's not that's not the Haley Kripe that I know. Right. I mean, she's – like I've said, not only is she a great athlete, but she understands the team dynamic more than just about any kid I've ever known. Yeah, yeah. So I think the, uh, the ultimate goal for her, obviously, is to end up at the uh, same spot that they did last year. Mm-hmm. Obviously, it's going to be a different location, but the same, you know, end result with them holding up that big – uh, plaque of the state of Indiana. That would that'd be the end goal there mm-hmm. for her. So, and the Pioneer Panthers. Um, so uh, let's let's start off. Uh, let's talk a little bit of uh, track because uh, the Rochester boys and girls both got it done again, second year in a row, TRC champions. And it took a little bit longer this time to to get that all worked out. They uh, didn't do the high jump and pole vault on Friday night they came back and did it on Wednesday night and I I had a question on the final results because um, I don't remember the exact number but I know Rochester had 0.6 how do you get 0.6 three-way tie for eighth in the high jump okay so you're basically splitting uh, I think they split up two points three different ways so everybody gets 0.66 okay because they didn't do the 6-6. Six, six. So I'm like, how do you get .6 of a point in, in track? Because I could see maybe .5, but mm-hmm. the, the .6 kind of threw me off. And So they end up winning by 1.1 points. 1.1 points, 1. 1 points <laughs> yeah. And the hero, I guess, of the day was Dustin Seibert, who won the pole vault. I mean, if he had finished second, they wouldn't have won. But he right. finished first, and not only that, but he went 13 feet. And it was interesting. I was talking to, to Ryan Helt, and, of course, Ryan's sitting there watching, and his first attempt at he, – he passes all the way up to 11-6. And his first attempt at 11-6, he misses, and Ryan's going, oh, boy. Mm. And from that on, Dustin was spectacular. He made 11-6 on his second try, then 12, then 12 six, then 13 feet. 13 feet, a new PR for Dustin. Just a soft-spoken kid. I asked him, I was like, did did he feel there was any pressure on you? He was like, no, just treated like a normal meet, just mm. working with Carmen Reeves and just the fundamentals and – it just kind of, you know, getting more height out and, you know, 13 feet, that's that's just a spectacular performance. And then Mitchell Schaefer was fourth, and they needed him. And Braxton Mencius was fourth in the long jump. They needed all of it to win by 1.1 points over a good Manchester team. Yeah, they couldn't have had anybody drop down in one place. And, right. And still ended up in, the, obviously, that position. That's That's got to be one of the tightest uh, finishes uh, in the TRC in a while. Talking with Ryan Helton, John Walkman, and those guys, they, that was the closest that they had ever remembered. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, the boys got it done. The girls right. got it. And what's done. interesting about the boys? They only won one event, the four by eight relay at the start of the meet. Uh huh. That was the only. It was just a whole bunch of seconds and thirds, and it just added up. Yeah. Yeah. End. Well, and then the pole vault. And the and Dustin in the pole vault. Yeah. 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 Which was obviously a, yeah. a big one there at the end. Mm-hmm. On so you were talking about on Thursday, on Friday, yeah. they only won yeah. one one yeah. event. Yeah. So um, the boys got it done. Uh, the girls got it done as well. They had a little bit more of a margin. They had a thirty-two point lead going in. It would have been. A, very difficult for them to lose, but uh, yeah, on Friday, uh, or excuse me, on Wednesday, um, Kenneth Jackson was third, and Macy Nelson was fourth in the pole vault, and uh, Cammy Burkett, I think, set a PR in the long jump, which is just amazing. 
I think the, she finished that she's even long jumping is just I I, I shake my head. I mean, yeah. I, you know, I just don't I just don't understand how she's even able to, to compete. I mean, it's just crazy. I mean, what a, what a gutsy kid. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's yeah. Gutsy is, yeah, that's – And especially – especially, okay, I can see, you know, if you're running, yeah, the chances of that lateral movement are, are limited, right? Mm-hmm. But when you're running and then jumping into sand with a lot of force, I – well, yeah. that's just – if I was her dad or mom, I'd be like yeah. – uh, they got to be just cringing every time she jumps. I mm-hmm. mean, that's scary, but well, she's she's done it yeah. at a high level. That's crazy. Mm-hmm. Right, I think we talked about some of the other winners. Uh, you know, Madeline Calloway won the 1600. Uh, and, uh, Kenzie Bradley won the 200, and a, basically a photo finish with a girl from Peru. Was, yeah, I mean, it, 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 you know, it, but it, you know, Macy Nelson won the 100 hurdles. It was just a really great performance. Rochester won the four by one relay. That was probably the real historic moment of it. I don't think Rochester's ever. That's not an event that Rochester usually does well in. I mean, Rochester's always been kind of that. That event, that school that does the distance running, but for them to win the four by one, that was just great. With with Cami taking it home on the anchor leg, and yeah, I mean this team is uh, you know just good depth. Just they're, they're, they get points from a lot of different areas. I mean Kennedy Jackson coming through clutch and winning the the shot put in her final throw. Yeah. In just horrible weather conditions last Friday. Yeah. Yeah. So you got to feel good about both of these teams as we come into uh, sectional next week. Right. The girls sectional is Tuesday at Bremen. I think you know can rochester do better than third place which is what they finished last year you've got culver academy in plymouth that will be looming over them Mm -hmm. Uh, rochester had a duel against plymouth earlier this year rochester lost that duel but it was you know it was about 40 degrees outside and i i remember watching zoe zoe seward won the two mile at the conference and zoe and madeline were taking kind of taking it easy uh at that race so yeah uh I think they're hoping, looking forward to getting another chance at Plymouth, but of course that CGA team is just terrific. They've got a great distance runner, and Celeste Graham, and a great sprinter, and CC Figueroa. So, yeah, they, they've got their work cut out. But it, 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 in a lot of ways, they're maybe even more well set for for this for this time. Yeah. So while we're we're talking track and field, uh, the Hoosier North uh, Conference meet, uh, they split theirs. So Tuesday night, they a pretty were, good idea, I think. Yeah, yeah, it is. It really is. Rather and than spending five hours in a yeah in a car wash, right? It's not a it's not a bad idea. Mm-hmm. So the girls were at Knox on Tuesday. The boys were at uh, Laville last night. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, for our teams, uh, you know, at the girls' meet, Pioneer finishes second. Uh, really, really tough Laville team. I mean, they they just uh, you know dominated. I think they won by 43. Yeah. Uh, they just, boy, top to bottom, they've got uh, girls in, in all events that, you know, if they weren't winning, they were getting second and third. I mean, it just seemed like they were all over the place. Um, and then Culver and Caston tied for uh, seventh there as well. Right, Pioneer was third. want to give a shout-out to uh, Mackenzie Rogers, who won both the 400 and the 800. That's a hard double to pull off. Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, I know Maddie Kaiser had done it in the past, but that's that's tough. That's a that's that's a, takes a lot of energy out of you, especially in warm weather like that. And for mm-hmm. Mackenzie to do that, that was a great job by her. And then Violet Montgomery won both the sixteen hundred and the thirty two hundred. Well, those two girls alone. I mean, you you talk about the mm-hmm. four and the eight. They also uh, Mac also does the four uh, four by four and the four by eight. Right. So she she runs two fours, two eights, and fight. Yeah, and yeah, and Pioneer won the four by eight relay mm-hmm. with Rogers and Montgomery and McKenna Stricker and. Blair Grigsby, or Anna Shewalter. Anna, Anna, Anna Shewalter, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, and uh, they uh, they had a personal, or I don't know, it's not a personal best, but they set a, a best for that team. So 10.53, that's, yeah. once you get under 11 minutes, you're, you're, you're good, you're doing well. Uh, I think probably, you know, in the 10.45 range, will probably get them out to regional. Mm-hmm. I think that would, that, that would be a fantastic accomplishment if they can do that. Yeah, I was trying to think, you know, I, I think they really can go faster. They just haven't, uh, you know, it's it's been hard because they haven't really had anybody pushing them. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, they, they've been finishing these uh, quite easily, actually. So um, I know at, at Glenn on Friday, they actually lapped three teams. Mm-hmm. Uh, so Yeah, yeah. sometimes in those 4 by 8 races, it's just the competition makes you go faster. Right, right. So I, I think they have it in them. They definitely have it in them, and, and you can see and. You know, Violet Montgomery's another one too. I mean, she runs I think four miles basically every night that they have a track meet with yeah. the uh, 
Right. She, she was th- not only did she win the sixteen hundred thirty two hundred, she was third in the eight hundred behind McKenzie. Right. Right. So they uh, they finished second uh, at uh, at uh, Knox on Tuesday. Like I said, uh, I forget Winnemac. Yeah, I think. Se- second. Yeah. Yeah. You're they right. were second. Boys were third. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, Winnemac was in the uh, fourth spot, if I remember right, and then uh, Culver and Caston ended up tied for seventh. Yes. Uh, last night over at LaVille. Um, Congrats to the Winnemac Warriors to win the yeah. Hoosier North title. A great accomplishment for them. And the, the, the key, you know, linchpin was Colby Wegner, who ran – he ran fantastic in both mm. the 1600 and the 3200. It was – you know, I mean, he was talking with Coach Bryce Kappas after the meet, and he was talking about, you know – you know, it starts with with Colby just putting in the miles, and then he added some strategy to it. And you know, Leighton Dot was the pioneer was leading that race through about the first half of it, and Colby was kind of just kind of measuring him, just kind of lurking back. And then he kind of made his move around that fifth lap in an eight lap race, and that's when he took over. And well, he ran 10:17. That's that's moving really well mm-hmm. for two miles. Uh, and then uh, Carson Meyer actually came up, and he beat his own teammate Leighton Dot for second place at the very end. Yeah. So Car- Carson's a talented kid. I think we've talked about we've talked about Leighton, and we've talked about Jackson. But Carson's he's just a really talented runner too. I mm-hmm. mean, this is you know he ran. A th- I think they both ran like 10:53. I mean, they both like like you needed to look at the photo to see which one was second, which one was third. So yeah, boy, two two good young runners at Pioneer, and then of course they combine to win the four by eight. Uh, really on the boys side yeah it was and then you know you throw in jackson baker and of course jackson not only won was part of the four by eight really he won he won the open 800 you know the last time i talked to jackson he ran 209 at the cast county in he ran 204.5 at the at yeah. laville last night so he was running really well yeah yeah it's it's fun to watch those three because jackson's kind of your your 800 guy um uh, Carson's kind of your mile guy, and then uh, Leighton is kind of your two mile guy, and and actually I think that win uh, for Carson in the two mile, or not the win, but you know he beat Leighton. Mm-hmm. I think that was the first time that he's beat Leighton this yeah. year. So, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see. Uh, so they finished third behind Winnemac and uh, Laville. The Pioneer Panthers finished third. Yeah, uh, I didn't hear where Caston and Culver came in on that. I haven't heard yet either. I, oh. I, I haven't gotten the results yet, but we'll we'll put it on the blog as soon as we get it. Okay. But I I, I wanted to give a, a another shout out to Will Byros. He's a freshman from Winnemac, and he won the high jump, beat out, beating out Caden Hill from Pioneer for yeah. the title. Yeah. Yeah, it's just a freshman. Just a freshman. Okay. Yeah. So they're going to be graduating a lot of guys, but it sounds like they've got some more uh, that'll be coming up in the next few years over there at Winnemac. Yeah. Yeah. They've got, you know, they've got another good hurdler in uh, John Malco. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So and some um, good throwers, you know, Bo Brand and Kyle Olds. Yeah. So we talked about it coming up next week for track and field. Uh, sectionals are going to be happening uh, Tuesday night for the girls, Thursday night for the boys, and then, like we said, you know, uh, we got about three different locations for both. Right. The girls, uh, you know, will you know, most of our area schools are going to be going to Bremen, but if you're Pioneer, you're going to Northwestern, and if you're Winnemac, you're going to Kankakee Valley, and then next Thursday, most of our area schools are going to Plymouth, but if you're Pioneer, you're going to Kokomo, and if you're Winnemac, you're going to Rensselaer, and that Rensselaer sectional is always usually pretty wide open. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it should be, uh, should be a good time next week. Uh, sounds like it's going to be a little uh, cooler. I haven't yeah. really got a chance. I just heard it is going to cool down a little bit. It's that's the other thing too. We go from uh, you know freezing to all of a sudden everybody's dealing with high humidity, and and mm-hmm. you know it's like if you're a track runner, I mean, I'd almost be re- I'd almost rather run in 40 degrees than 80 degrees in high humidity. I think it oh, uh, yeah. has a huge effect on the runners. I talked with Zoe Seward after the her 3200, and she was like. Why is everybody complaining about the weather? I don't like the weather. Right. <laughs> right. Well, when you're running, it like, it's it's not yeah. bad. But uh, when like, you're watching, that's when it hits. Yeah, gets it, was, rough. it was 52 and cloudy and rainy. And, but she, yeah, it was a pretty pretty good running weather for her. And she ran 1146. Yeah. Which is a really good time, too. All right. Any other track and field stuff you want to go I wanted to, to give over? a shout out to Chesney Miller from Valley to win the 800. She won the 800 on Friday with just a great kick in like the last 150 to beat Madeline Calloway. And then turns around on Wednesday and wins the long jump. Yeah. It's weird to win a track event and a field event in the same conference meet, but she did it. Yeah. And Chesney is just – that 800 – you know, I hadn't seen her run an 800 before. She looked ideal for that race. Yeah. Everything – I mean, she's – you know, 
her strength and her kick are just ideal for that race, I think. Yeah. That's a tough race. I mean, yeah. if you've not run an 800, <laughs> that's a, you know, the 400 is probably the hardest race in the, on the, on the right. docket, I would say. Yeah. 300 hurdles probably right there, but yeah. the 800 is, is tough too. Cause you got to put in the mileage, but you also got to put in the sprint work too. Yeah. To get ready for that. Yeah. And Chesney's got both, I think. Yeah. And if you, I mean, again, if you don't have good foot speed, you're not going to win the long jump. And that's just a sign mm -hmm. yeah. that she's got both, she got it. Yeah, cause, all of it. Because normally your your long jumpers are your sprinters, mm -hmm. and you wouldn't really consider an eight hundred to be a sprint. It's kind of on that borderline, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's great uh, stuff over there from Valley as well. Right. Where did they finish in uh, in TRC? Uh, I th okay, I think they finished in. They went from third to sixth, or was it the no? I think I think I think the girls finished in third. The boys finished in sixth. I'll, we'll we'll look that up and get that on the. One of them, yeah, they were third going in, and then they finished sixth, I think is what happened. Okay. We'll have it out on the blog, too. Mm -hmm. I just got the results in late last night, so Okay. we'll get the results in on there. All right. Let's uh, – But Manchester finished second in both. In both. Okay. Let's take a quick break here. We'll come back. We'll talk a, a little golf and a little tennis and uh, get uh, going with uh, some baseball and softball after that here on Talking Sports with Val. Hey, welcome back. Here we are live tonight from Bob Copeland Field, and you can see out there on the field, the boys are out uh, getting some uh, work in as they are getting set for a big non-conference game tonight here at Bob Copeland. Uh, John Glenn coming in, and, uh, you know, they've only got two losses on the season. Uh, you know, both of those are conference losses for them, but, uh, you know, the pretty high-powered team coming in here tonight, so it'll be a good test for the uh, Zebras they are coming in off of a, a win on Wednesday. We'll talk more about that in a little bit. But, uh, you know, they got to be feeling better about themselves after that tough one on Monday against Wabash and then coming back and getting that win on, on Wednesday with McConaughey. Yeah. Yeah, Luke Hunting was the hero on Wednesday with that big walk-off RBI single. And we will, like I said, we'll talk more about that here mm -hmm. in a few. But uh, let's uh, let's go over to uh, – well, we're not going to physically go over to the tr uh, tennis courts, but – Let's talk a little tennis here. The uh, young, uh, I say young, they are they're actually got some seniors, but I guess they're kind of inexperienced, mm -hmm. uh, but now they're they're getting some experience. But uh, they've kind of had their, their bumps and bruises here this year. Um, Joe said the other night they, they all went three sets, but unfortunately they all lost in the third yeah. set. Three, three of the five matches three went three sets, but even, even the two matches that went two sets were two pretty close sets. Yeah. So, yeah, but they lost 5-0 to McConaughey, which was just, you know, just disappointing because McConaughey has had a great tradition in, in sure. tennis over the years. And But, uh, you know, both doubles teams won a set. You know, Riley Holloway and Emily Hughes won a set at one doubles, and then uh, uh, McKenna Beal and Riley Clevenger won a set at two doubles. Ella McCarter won a set at two singles. And then, yeah, well, like you know, like I said, even, even Kylie Houston's match at one singles and Lily Eaton's match at three singles were both pretty close matches. Yeah. So, you know, they're they're gaining some of that experience. Uh they're going to find out uh on Sunday, right? On their sectional opponent. Monday is when they will find out. Monday is the draw. Yeah, Monday okay. is the draw and then the sectional start on Wednesday. Yeah. And uh so it's it's Rochester, Culver, is it the same as Boys Knox and North Judson, those four. It's okay. four team sectional, so Yeah. We'll have the semifinals on Wednesday and the finals on Thursday and if it rains then They'll just move it indoors. Right. That's the uh, beauty of uh, Culver Academy. Right. right. So the sectional is going to end on Thursday one way or another. So that's that's good to see that they're they're hosting events again. Did they – they didn't do the – or did they do the fall? Did they do the boys in the fall at Culver Academy? I can't remember. Right. I think I, did, I think they did the sectional and the regional, but not the semi-state. I think the semi-state was at LaPorte. Yeah. But they – I know there for a while they were obviously they were not uh, willing to host events just because of the COVID stuff. So that's yeah. good to see them back there because right. they have the great facility where right. if it is raining, <laughs> just walk a few feet and go into the, the indoor. Right. Arena. So they'll have sectionals, regionals, and semi-state there. And yeah, I mean again, Rochester's played some tough, you know, tough uh, opposition to try to get ready for this moment. But uh, we'll we'll see how they do. Again, Peru, you know, the Peru they they clinched the TRC last night. Of course, Peru's the defending regional champion, so. You know, Winnemac and or excuse me, I mean Winnemac, McConaughey, and uh, you know they beat Wabash, you know Manchester, 
Uh, they can play Northfield on Saturday. That'll be another. Good. Northfield's been right up there in the in the TRC. Northfield actually took a match from Peru. They lost four to one, but still, mm-hmm. it's a Northfield team that's a pretty good team. Yeah, yeah, it's you know a fairly uh, solid conference for uh, yeah. girls tennis. Uh, yeah. You know. For the most part, right. so Rochester got also got a win over Southwood earlier this week. They beat them five zero. Yeah. So and I think like three of the matches were six love, six love. So it's a sign that you know getting getting a little bit better, but they're really gonna have to pick it up if they want to, you know, especially if they want to beat Culver Academy. That's they've loomed, they've loomed large over almost the last two decades. I mean, the last right. eighteen years they've been in a sectional together. Right. You know, once they got over. You know, Culver Academy to win those two back-to-back sectionals, that was, you know, such a big moment for them in their history. So uh, Valley is the uh, the other team that has tennis for us. Um, boy, we thought there earlier in the week they lost their coach, but uh, kind of a, a, a different arrangement it sounds like uh, going to be happening there. Huh? Yeah, Emily Ackerman is going to continue to be the coach, and she's also going to coach the Grace College team. Uh, if you're f- familiar with women's college tennis, and I'm – become familiar in the last couple of days uh, they have a fall season and a spring season in women's college tennis but the spring season usually ends i think is mostly held indoors and is usually ends right around the first week in april or so okay and so that'll end usually right that's, it'll end right around the time of valley spring break so she can focus on that and then as soon as the the gray season is over then she can coach the valley women's team and emily ackerman's husband hunter ackerman is helping out with the coaching and Hunter is a former baseball player at Grace College. Yeah. And uh, he's a teacher at Valley. And uh, apparently he's helping out with the coaching. Good. Apparently, uh, yeah, Emily took him out to the tennis court and <laughs> he, he enjoyed it. Huh? Taught him everything she knows. And yeah, yeah. So, he, so he's helping out as well. But, they're, you know, Valley's having a nice, you know, you look at uh, girls like Lydia Miller and Talia Holder. Um, you know, the, Madeline Weaver's playing three singles for them. And then. Uh, you know, Lily All, we're familiar with Lily with golf and basketball, but she's doing a nice job at one doubles along with Andy Schwinger. And then uh, that Feldman-Rodriguez duo at two two doubles, they're doing a nice job. Valley got a win over Southwood the other night. Uh, you know, they've been pretty competitive all year. And, of course, they beat Rochester at Rochester. That was, you know, maybe their biggest win of the year. But they've, they've had some nice wins. Yeah. And they're going to be uh, – where do they go for sectional? Go to Warsaw. They go to Warsaw. Okay. All right, that's a five-team sectional. It'll be Valley, Warsaw, Wawasee, Whitco, and Columbia City. So somebody has a uh, first round buy. Is that? Well, I guess yeah. Three teams will get a buy. Yeah. Okay. So there's just one. Yeah. yeah. So just one, basically one first round game. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. Match. Sorry, mm-hmm. not a game. Jeez. Yeah, I think so. Warsaw's. I want to say Warsaw's won something like 16 years in a row. Or yeah, Warsaw is the uh, Culver Academy of of that sectional. Right. Right. Yeah. All right. Um, how about golf? We got uh, some big uh, matches coming up. We got the TRC coming up tomorrow. The TRC tournament's coming up at Rosella Ford tomorrow, and I'd have to say the McConaughey Braves would have to be the favorites at this point. But Rochester, I think, will be competitive. I think they're going to be, you know, Rochester. They have a win over Valley this year. They have a win over Whitco. They have a win over. Uh, they haven't faced North Miami yet. North Miami didn't show up to a meet that they were uh, for for a meet that they were supposed to have at Sycamore, but you know, North Miami. It was tenth last year. I, I, I don't. I'm not sure they're going to be too competitive. Rochester got wins over Peru, over Wabash. Rochester beat Southwood and Manchester in a three-way on Wednesday. Um, Rochester beat Northfield this year. I think they beat. So, uh, yeah. I mean, I think Rochester's going to be pretty competitive. Um, you know, Rochester season best was a 362 when it was at Rosella Ford uh, about a week and a half ago. Mm-hmm. So they've played this course. They know the course. Of course, the, it was very windy that day and kind of – it wasn't rainy, but it was kind of damp. Now they'll play the course again tomorrow, but it's going to be drier, and that, those greens will be a little more baked. <laughs> so let's see. Little, yeah. It'll be interesting to see how the, the, the ball rolls on the greens and how the kids, you know, are able to kind of deal with the greens and read the greens. Um, but Coach Dan Bailey has just really praised his kids. I mean, he's talked about, uh, you know, the kids like J.R. McLaughlin – um, the work ethic they put in. I mean, they'll go out and play in a nine-hole match, and then they'll stick around the course and get on the green and practice some putting or even even play a couple more holes just to – I mean, they've just – you know, these kids have put in a lot – Noah Riffle's another kid that he's talked about who's put in a lot of work. Uh, you know, um, you know, Drew Strasser is a kid. I mean, they, 
you know, he's, he's, he's struggled with his putting, but it looks like his putting has gotten a lot better. So, so we'll see how they do. I mean, this is, uh, again, I'd have to say McCon- McConaughey shot a 333 at that Rosella Ford tournament earlier. So you'd have to say they're the favorite, but I think Rochester would be competitive and they should, you know, should be able to put a couple of kids on the, all, on the all conference team. Yeah. And the thing with Rochester, you're probably not going to have a medalist on their team, mm-hmm. but they seem to uh, be a, a pretty tight pack. I mean, usually, you know, ten strokes from top to bottom. I mean, they're they're pretty close together, and, yeah. and they're 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 not bad. I mean, you can see that group uh, in a couple of years being really really good. Yeah, Drew's Drew's been playing number one. Uh, Dryden Vance has been playing number two, and then Riffle and McLaughlin, three four, then five. We'll see who's five is going to be Wesley Meadows and Robert Bazo kind of been vying for that spot. We'll see who. It's going to be. And then Valley, um, again, Greg Miller, he won the Whitco invite a couple of weeks ago. He's just there on question number one. Mm-hmm. And then Branson McBriar has come along, and you've seen kids like, you know, like Nolan Cumberland, who hasn't played a lot of competitive golf. So, again, Ben Shriver's gotten the numbers out, but we'll see uh, Eli Love, uh, Nolan Grossman. So, uh, I, you know, he, uh, he's got some, you know, Ben, ben Shriver has some tough decisions to make in terms of who will fill out the lineup after Greg. But that's a good problem to have because yeah. now they have numbers. Yeah. A little bit more separation from one to two with the Valley program than Rochester. Right, right. Um, but uh, a definite uh, solid number one. I mean, he could very well be a, a TRC medalist. I mean, yeah, he's he could, that good. He's that good, and he's played Rosella Ford a lot. I mean, I don't know if he's played it as much as, you know, Milk Ron Barn, but he's played it quite a few times. Because remember, that's where Valley goes for their sectional also. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I'm sure uh, – you know, it's probably or, depending on where he lives, uh, yeah. probably as close to to go there as it is to go to uh, Rochester yeah. to play. So, who knows what he does on on his you know his spare time? Mm-hmm. So, uh, I know he probably golfs a lot. Mm-hmm. So, uh, what else golf wise? Anything else? Uh, not a whole lot going on. I I, I know Jackson Radebush has had a great year for for Winnemac. Uh, he's going to be, uh, of course, the Hoosier North. Tournament's going to be here in town at Mill Creek on yeah. at, at on uh, the 21st, and then uh, if you look at Cast, and they got a nice win over Knox the other night. AJ Dague is having a great year, so yeah, that's what's going on. Yeah, so a week from Saturday mm-hmm. will be the uh, Hoosier North Conference tournament, and so they will. Uh, they'll be a couple weeks out for the sectional for them, right? Right, uh, the sectional. Yeah, right. The sectional at Logansport is Friday, June third. The sectional at Warsaw is Friday, June third. Okay. And then regional is probably on the ninth. Okay. And I think we've talked about uh, they're changing the golf tournament format slightly beginning next year. That has been passed. I think the vote was eighteen to one by the executive committee, and it will be uh, they're they're increasing the number of regionals from five to six. Uh, but still. That means they're increasing the number of teams that make state from 15 to 18. Mm-hmm. But at regional, only the top two individuals on non-advancing teams will make state instead of the top five. Yeah. So that means, uh, if you do the math, it means 102 kids will make state instead of 100. But it'll just, it'll help. Well, there, well there's a lot of debate. I mean, yeah, there's a lot of yeah. debate. Does it, does it hurt the kids from the, small, from the smaller programs? I guess that's up for debate. Yeah. But again... I was there when Rochester made state as a team in 2006. That was a 12-team regional. Now the regionals are 18 teams. Mm-hmm. And now, back when it was a 12-team regional, it was, you know, all those teams were kind of, you know, from the south, you know, kind of our area and the Lafayette area. You know, once you get to a regional with 18 teams and Carmel and Westfield and Zionsville come in, it's... N- yeah. It, it it could go either way, right? Right. I mean, I mean the, you could look at it and you say, okay, the the number of individuals that advance is lower, so those smaller schools that don't have a chance of advancing as a team are now losing their best golfer who could have possibly advanced as an individual. Yeah. But you could also say that you know maybe some of those schools that do have teams that wouldn't have advanced now have an opportunity as a team to advance. Right, instead of 18 teams at your regional, it'll now be 15 teams, So it's, mm. but still the top three advance, so it's, I don't want to say easier, but it's, I guess that's the term, Easy. it's easier, it's not easy, but it's easier. Right, right. So, so I mean, yeah, it's... So, yeah, I mean, and the IHSA specifically said in their statement that we wanted to make this more about a team sport. This is not... 
we should we want it to be more like college golf and less like the PGA Tour. Okay. I think cool. is I think is kind of what they were going at. Yeah. So they wanted to get more teams and, mm-hmm. and less individuals. Yeah. So I will start in the fall with the girls' state tournament. I guess one thing they could do is is uh, you know start doing it by class, and then uh, and then you could just do straight teams. You know, don't do any individuals. Sure. I mean, yeah. You know. Right. I mean, golf is a, golf is a numbers sport. I mean, yeah. it's 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 not it's you know it's yeah absolutely. So I don't know. All right, well, we'll take a quick break here, and we'll come back, and uh, we're going to talk a little bit um, about some uh, realignment news. Um, you know, that came out uh, a week or a week and a half ago or so, um, and then uh, Coach Corey Good is going to be joining us, I think, for a segment, so we'll talk some baseball when he gets up here. So when we get back, we'll talk a little bit about uh, sectional realignment in our next segment. We'll be back here in just a moment talking sports with Val. RTC Fiber Communications knows the Internet is evolving, taking new twists and turns as we add our input, make our choices, and follow the light that connects us all. It's quite a journey, one to experience with the fastest speeds available. Contact RTC Fiber Communications. Connect to the Internet speed that suits your journey. And enjoy the ride. Hey, welcome back here. We are live from Bob Copeland Field. Uh, take a quick look here out on the field. It is a beautiful day here in Rochester. And of course, the Zebras uh, doing a little extra work here before the uh, John Glenn game. We told you earlier in the week we weren't going to be covering the game tonight, and I just I couldn't. Uh, I didn't want to do that because we didn't do the game. I gave on you Wednesday. my puppy dog eyes. Yeah, I know, said. right? I, but you know, we did softball on Wednesday. We did the game here, obviously Monday, and I just felt like we needed to cover this game. And I do have uh, some obligations that I promised uh, with uh, the distinguished young women um, scholarship program. I'm going to help do some uh, training videos for them down at Logan. So Val's going to take over, uh, hold the fort down at the beginning of the game, and. I'll go down and do that and then come back. So we will be doing that game here uh, at 5 o'clock. So. And don't worry, I have some Cubs trivia. <laughs> okay, well, hopefully Mr. Screeton will be here because uh, if not, you're going to be doing it through, you know, answering your own trivia okay. questions. Okay. So uh, let's talk a little realignment, Val. The uh, sectional realignments came out. We, uh, we knew a while ago, you know, what classes uh, all of our schools were in. Uh, we just didn't know where they were going to be going, and apparently the IHSA didn't know some of the <laughs> where they were going to be going either because they uh, came out originally with Pioneer football in 2A, and the next day they said, ooh, that was wrong, Yeah, and uh, they were in the 1A sectional. So let's start off here at Rochester because the big one was obviously the girls' basketball, right? Yeah. Uh, because the, they were moving up to 3A, so completely new sectional, completely new class. Uh, you know, they haven't been in, in 3A since, what, 20 – uh, 15? 2015 when they so, made it to semi-state, yeah. yeah. So talk about, uh, you know, it's an interesting-looking uh, uh, sectional. Right. A bunch of teams with a history of success, but I don't know if there's any one team that stands out as the team that's going to be, oh, my goodness, they're going to be the favorite going in. Right. Obviously, you've got two TRC teams in Rochester and Valley. Of course, it would be those two, right? Of course, it would be <laughs> those two. And then the other four, Culver Academy, who won their sectional last year. Yeah. Good young coach and Bill Murchie, John Glenn, uh, Knox. Ten, yeah, ten winning season last twelve years. Bremen, five winning season last six years, and Knox. Uh, you know the coach, the program that Coach Minix has built has just been tremendous. Yeah, and Bremen is moving up to three A this time. Bremen, as well. like Rochester, is moving up to three A. And I don't believe they've ever been in three A before. Mm-hmm. I don't. I don't think have they. I guess just for softball due to success factor, but yeah, yeah. just on enrollment, yeah, I think this is a first. Yeah. So, uh, you know, Coach Robinson does a great job at Bremen, and mm-hmm. I mean they've, you know, they 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 they've really, I mean they've, you know, they've had a, I mean we've talked about, I think Aaliyah Foster. There's another Foster who's going to be a sophomore, I think next year is a good player. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Moyer girl was great for them. I mean, this is all these programs have a history of success in girls basketball, mm-hmm. or a recent success. So. That's what's going to make it an interesting 3A sectional. Also, uh, you got to look, too, uh, there's a lot of question marks in, at a lot of them because of graduation. 
Knox, you know, they've gotten smaller over the last couple of years with the graduation of, you know, I think all their six footers are gone now. Right. Um, they lose Jordan. Um, yeah. Re- Remy, Remy Jordan last year. And then the Megan, uh, the, the guard is graduating. I mean, that, I mean, that, that class had a great, great run the yeah, these last did. two years. Yeah. And, and then, of course, uh, Coach Minix is losing Coach Eskridge from his coaching staff. He's going to take over the Knox boys' head coaching job. So, yeah. Uh, but he, I mean, Coach Minix runs a great program, and yeah. that zone defense is still very unique. It's it's hard to stop. It's, of course, it's interesting because Rochester's in the sectional, and they're going to play a zone defense. Right. And their zone defense is pretty unique. Yeah, it will be. Yeah. 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 Uh, you know, and then you look at the academy, Taylor Bowen graduating. She's mm-hmm. obviously a D1 uh, post player. Um but the academy is always one of those that you never know because you don't really have an idea because of the feeder system, you know, mm-hmm. because they just come in as freshmen. Uh, you talked about uh, the graduations at Bremen uh, mm-hmm. as well. So, I mean, really, if you if you look at uh, if you look at Rochester and Valley, I mean, you got to feel pretty good if you're one of those two schools. Cause right. Valley loses Mercedes Snap to graduation, but they've got a girl coming up in Carly Snyder who got a lot of playing time, got more and more playing time as the season went on. Unfortunately, that was due to Mercedes's injury, but the way Carly Snyder was playing, I mean, she has a chance to be a really special player. Yeah. And to go along with the group of – that group of kids who've just kind of – we've been following them their whole careers, and they'll all be seniors next year. Yeah. It can be a really fun season. Yeah. And, by the way, Valley added John Glenn to their regular season schedule. Yeah. Next year. Yeah. And and John Glenn's another one, you know, with uh, uh, Jesse Alaska graduating. Uh, yeah. That's one of their better players, uh, mm-hmm. so you know they're going to have some question marks there as well. Right. Uh, yeah. Again, I'm not as familiar with the John Glenn feeder system. I know they basically played six girls for most of the year last year, so we'll see who's kind of coming up to replace the the group that's graduating. There. Yeah. So that'll be an interesting sectional. Uh, you know, there in 3A, and it's it's one of those weird situations where the boys are, are staying in 2A, mm-hmm. but uh, they're going to have a, a new look as uh, for their sectional as well. Right, they're moving from 30, sectional 37 to sectional 36, which is kind of important because if Rochester wins their sectional, that means they'll be going to North Judson for the regional mm-hmm. instead of to Lapel. Right. But if you, look, if you look at the other teams, I mean, North Miami and Pioneer are both up from 1A. Obviously, Rochester's in the conference with North Miami, so they're not that unfamiliar. But Pioneer, Rochester hasn't played Pioneer in about four years. Mm-hmm. So those two, and then Winnemac, a team that Rochester is very, very familiar with, and Wabash, a team that Rochester is in, plays in the conference with, and then... Uh, and then the Lewis Cass team that knocked Rochester out of the sectional last year. Right, so they still have uh, Lewis Cass to contend with. Uh, uh, you know, you got to think like Pioneer. I mean, they graduated all five of their starters. They have Drew back, but, mm. uh, you know, they're going to be, you know, trying to find some answers right, as they'll well. Have, right, they'll have Drew back, Drew uh, McKegg back. They'll have Caleb Sweet back. Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, but, yeah, I mean, they'll they'll have to build that depth. But, I mean, they've done a, you know, Coach McKegg does a great job of kind of building that depth. He, he likes to he likes that balanced scoring, and we'll see if he can cont- keep it up next year. Yeah. Um, so what other? Then, uh, uh, yeah, we should mention Wabash. I mean, they're going to be pretty formidable in that conference because that was a sophomore heavy team last year. I think their right. top three or four scorers were all sophomores. Yeah. And so now they've got a two year run coming up in the sectional. I'm really curious to see how they do. Another uh, another interesting. And, and Winnem- we should mention Winnemac. New coach Cam Bennington, who was hired earlier this week. Uh, he was an assistant coach in McCutcheon. He's a Twin Lakes grad. I'll be interested to see how he does. Uh, again, if you've if you've played for Ken Adams and you've coached under Tyler Shear, you've been around some really good coaching minds. Yeah. And I'll be interested to see what he brings to to Winnemac boys basketball. Yeah. Another interesting sectional is going to be in volleyball with the Rochester Zebras. Uh, now they have uh, Pioneer moving up to two A, and they're going to be in their sectional. You know, people look at Pioneer in that sectional. They have not won the most sectionals of any school in that new sectional. Mm-hmm. Rochester has, right? With, I think twenty-two. 20, yeah. Pioneer was seventeen, but and Rochester had great success in two A over the years. It's three A where they've kind of struggled to win sectionals because they, you know, they've, they've gotten put in with Mishawaka Marion and South Bend St. Joe in the past. So still in 2A, but this is going to be – this is the most formidable 2A program that they've had to de- – even, I think, more so than the South Central team that knocked them out last year. But, yeah, it'll be – I mean, the volleyball sectional will finally make sense. I mean, that was just a weird sectional with right. Westville yeah. and, and South, South Central. Central and, yeah. yeah. Uh, but that, that's one thing I, I would just say in general. The IHSA seem to want to get some uniformity in these. Obviously, with girls in 3A and boys in 2A, you couldn't quite do that. 
but they, they did about as well as they could have in terms of some uniformity mm-hmm. with these groupings. I don't know if the committees got together, who were, but, I mean, it, it just makes a lot more sense. But having said that, uh, you know, Rochester had a pretty good su- success over the years with North Miami. Uh, they had pretty good success over the years with Winnemac. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's, you know, Wabash. Wabash beat them in a really good five-setter last year. Uh, they they had that great sectional final at North Miami a couple of years ago in Wabash one and five, uh, so that's that's really kind of a kind of a nice rivalry. I mean, they seem to play close matches year after year. Yeah, well that, that Pioneer team uh, coming off of their first sectional yeah. loss last year to Southwood in 16 years, uh, talking around with some of the Pioneer kids oof. and their parents, they that hurt. It, it hurt, and uh, they've got some you know it, as always they've got some girls that are really really serious about volleyball yeah. down there and. It's going to be even with the loss of of Haley Kripe. It's going to be a really tough team, and yeah, uh, you know you got Brooklyn Borges, you got Mackenzie Rogers, you got Kirsten Nice came on strong as a freshman last year. Uh, Mandy Weisenberger, I mean that girl just I would not want to be on the other side of that net when she's coming down with a with a spike. Yeah. I mean she's just a monster. Mm-hmm. It's going to be a it's going to be a tough uh, a tough go. You know, Coach Nye probably has a bad taste in his mouth, as like you said, some of the parents as well with yeah. that loss. But in that sectional, I would put up Alexa Kuskusekis with just about any setter in that sectional. I mean, she's mm-hmm. just a terrific player. Now it's kind of where do you get the offense around? To... Right, right. They they got they're going to get a little smaller. Yeah, they're going to get a little smaller. That's for sure. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll see. I mean, uh, Coach Leap uh, always seems to put together a, a really good team, and by the end of the year, they're they're playing really well. So, but uh, yeah, it's going to be an interesting. As we're talking fall sports, um, you know, Rochester football, I, I think, uh, got a, a nice realignment. A uh, Laville is out, which mm-hmm. is the defending champion who. Uh, looked to probably be uh, you know formidable for a couple of years with the with their youth. Uh, so they were out, and then it looked like Pioneer was going to be in, uh, but then mm-hmm. the next day they were out. Right. So um, and Bremen is also out. Right. So so Rochester, you know, a young upcoming team, uh, you got to feel really good about where they're at. Yeah, it's a seven-team sectional. That's kind of weird too. So somebody's mm-hmm. going to get it. going to get it by that first week. Yeah, and that's huge in football. Oh yeah, yeah. especially after the, all the 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 bumps and bruises you get through nine weeks. Yeah. yeah. And then you've got essentially, I guess you'd say, four teams from the Lafayette area. When you talk about Lafayette Central Catholic, uh, Delphi, Seeger, and Benton Central, mm-hmm. and then you've got Rochester, Winnemac, and Lewis, Cass. Some, some, somebody's going to be on the bus for a while. Uh, yeah. You know, if Rochester ends up with a Seeger or a Benton Central, I mean, that's not a close trip, and LCC's you know not close either. It's pretty spread out. Right. I think Rochester's had that weird. This is just a total coincidence. I think they've opened up at home the last eight years in a row or seven years in a row. So they'll be on the road this year. Yeah, at Seeger. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, but this is yeah. I mean, uh, right. I mean, again, you know, team camp. I know is coming up uh, middle mid to late June. They go to Manchester for that, and I think we'll find out a lot more about these kids. But uh, yeah, I, th- I think there's a lot of anticipation though with what they've got, with, with what they have coming back. Yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously they got some big holes to fill. Obviously with with Marshall and. Uh, um, was it Jesse? Um, Jesse Shriver, but Shriver. his younger brother Hunter will be back. Right. I mean, so they're they're losing some big guys on that line, but uh, boy, with the position players that they got, the skill players they got coming back. Obviously, Alex Deming. You know, you, you talked about him. I mean, I hadn't really seen him up close out mm-hmm. of his pads, and I mean, he's a he's a stud. Yeah. I mean, he is a stud, and that, that explains why he did I t- so we, well. <laughs> we told you he was a well-conditioned athlete. Yeah. Wow. And, of course, you know, Rochester has one of the best, you know, offensive and defensive linemen in the conference in Brady Beck. Mm-hmm. I mean, he, you know, he, he moved from – he was a center as a fresh, moved over to the guard spot as a sophomore. We'll see if he, – he really seemed to be a fit there. We'll see where he lines up uh, coming up as a junior. Yeah, but you gotta you got to feel really good. You know, Coach Schaefer in his second year coming in, uh, boy, mm-hmm. you know, just, just a good quality young team. and they got some good ones coming up too. Yeah, and he, he's – He's yeah, and he's built he's built kind of the program in that a little bit in that image of the Lewis Cass program that he was so familiar with in terms of just kind of just a stable full of you got Alex, but you get a kind of stable full of wing backs. You can just bring in a fresh guy. I mean, we haven't even talked about it. I mean, Gavin McKee had a great year last year. We don't we didn't mm-hmm. talk about him enough. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, it's going to be an exciting season. I, I was I was thinking last night we should have 
we should have like a there's you know the NFL schedule release was last night. We should do a, a, a RTC schedule release, and then we'll say same schedule as last year. <laughs> Next, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I'm really looking forward to that. Um, what other uh, – got a few minutes here. What other uh, realignment notes uh, are kind of on the top of your well, head? Well, the Valley is in Class 3A, Sectional 28 for football. That puts them in the section with Indianapolis Chittard, who's won 15 state championships all time. That's – it's it's an – you know, it's odd. They're in a section with Hamilton Heights. I, th- I think I got probably the most feedback. Uh, I tweeted out all the sections. That was the one that got the most feedback, I think. That's, a, that's another one that yeah. just kind of has you shaking your head. Like, how did they end up with those teams? Because, yeah. you know, they're the – farthest north mm. by a lot yeah it just seems weird pioneer and culver in the same sectional in 41 Casson's in sex, class 1 sectional 43 which means if pioneer were to play Casson or culver to play Casson, it wouldn't happen until the semi-state that's just weird yeah. um yeah uh the th- the 3a volleyball section i think for valley i think they get i think it's pretty good it's only a five-team sectional and they're not in the sectional with northwood anymore mm-hmm. now uh culver academy has won back-to-back volleyball sectionals also so that will be interesting. But, I mean, you've got, you know, Knox has been kind of up and down over the year. John Glenn, not a great tradition in volleyball. Bremen, not a great tradition in volleyball. Coach Durf had a great first year as coach. I'm really looking forward to seeing how this program advances um, moving forward. I mean, they, it was a good, good team last year. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be fun to see where they end up. Uh, one that's on my mind, obviously, is is the uh, sectional that the Rochester Lady Zebras were in last year. Mm-hmm. Um not the same number, though. It's a different sectional. Yeah. It's actually, uh, I guess you'd say, was it the, the Winnemac sectional last year, the number-wise? Because now, yeah. like you said, with Rochester now feeding into Judson, now this is going to be feeding into Winnemac as far as regionals, right? right. Class 2A, sectional 36, which is only a five-teamer. Winnemac with, and uh, Pioneer. With Winnemac and Pioneer. And then you've got a North Miami team that had a great year last year, won their first mm-hmm. sectional title in 14 years. And, yeah, we'll be in the mix there with, you know, Lewis Cass and, yeah, and of course, you know, Coach Stasiak, a new coach at Winnemac. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's going to be an interesting section. It's only a five teamer, but it'll be interesting. And by the way, uh, Lafayette Central Catholic state runner up in one A last year, up to two A due to high, enro- high enrollment. Clinton Prairie won two sectionals in a row, and Carroll, who won last year's two A sectional, all in the same sectional. Right. Two A sectional thirty eight, which means That's... a pioneer were to play Carroll next year, it wouldn't happen until a semi state. Right, and that's and the it, other thing is... And Carroll would yeah. have to get out just a grueling sectional. Right. That's the other thing, much like Rochester football sectional, the LaVille was the team that looked to be, you know, dominant for a few years. They're now out. Same thing in that sectional. Mm-hmm. Uh, Carroll has now moved to a different sectional as well. So yeah. if you're Coach Brooke, uh, mm-hmm. you got to be like, you know, yeah. kind of chomping your lips a little bit. There. Yeah. And so, and maybe we haven't talked about this too much. Westville going down from 2A to 1A mm-hmm. is going to be interesting because they're not in that Argus and Culver sectional. Right. Westville girls had a really great year last year. With Marquette with, as well. With Marquette. Yeah. And the Westville boys lost to North Judson in overtime in the sectional final at Judson. Coach Eubank does a nice job there. And now they're going down to 1A, and they're going to be in that sectional with, with Argus and Culver and uh, Triton. Uh, they can make some noise, I think, right away in that new sectional. Yeah. Meanwhile, for Caston, they welcome back West Central into their sectional, kind of old friends, but they West Central was in the Argus and Culver sectional. They're in the Caston sectional again, so that can be they, interesting. they got to be chomping their uh, yeah, know, Coach teeth Davis, a little bit there, yeah, too. Caston had a great JV last yeah. year, so, I, again, they graduate all five seniors, but I'm really excited to see what type of team Coach Davis puts out there. And the and girls. The gr- girls, I'm really excited to see the type of program Coach Douglas puts out there, but North White's still in there with them. Yeah, and but they graduated a ton. Right, but they a still ton. right. They'll still have Spry and Robertson, and yeah. But as long as their... Coach Heimlich is there, you know they'll be well right. coached. Well coached, sure. I'm, uh, I'll be curious. And then for the art, yeah, but I, I still think the Argus girls are going to be favored, even with Marquette Catholic in Westville in terms of what they have coming back. I'm really excited to see what what Coach Jennings puts out for the yeah. Lady Dragons next year. Yeah. Even losing Lizzie. Yeah. And but the kids they have coming back, I think they'll be terrific. Any other quick uh, alignment notes you want to go over? Uh, well, the big boys basketball news. Uh, Roger Grossman of Warsaw News Now is reporting that Joe Luce will be named the new boys basketball coach at Tippecanoe Valley on Monday at their school board meeting. That is a big-time hire if, they, if that's the guy. This is a guy who took Marion to the state finals, lost on that buzzer beater by, uh, to Brownsburg on that buzzer beater by Gordon Hayward back in 2008. He, he was the coach at Richmond, took Richmond, to, I think, to the semi-state. Uh, he was a coach at Jeffersonville, 20 years of head coaching experience, only two losing seasons. 
this is a big time coach, and that was a real eyebrow raiser when I saw that on my Twitter feed this yeah. morning. So wow, yeah. If he's the guy, that's that's a big time hire for Valley. Yeah, wow. Especially going into a five team sectional, you know, you know Culver Academy will be good with with Coach Galloway and his program, and you know Bremen's been kind of on the upswing a little bit. New coach at Knox as well with Coach Eskridge. Um, I'm curious to see how, and of course John Glenn. I mean, they were ranked number one in the state. Coach Han is a state championship winning coach. I mean. Yeah, is, is Bryce back? His yeah, son? Bryson, yeah. Bryson. I think we'll, Bryson. Be, we'll be seeing Bryson today, I believe. Yeah, yeah. All right, well, uh, Coach Good's up here, so uh, we'll take a break and we'll come back. We'll talk a little baseball with uh, with Coach Good here in the uh, sure, next in these games. Hey, welcome back. You'll be able here. to take part in Cubs trivia. Yeah, yeah you're right. Mm-hmm. I don't know. We could do, we could do uh, you know, they're micing guys up, uh, <laughs> you know, in the MLB. Let's, although uh, last uh, – Last week, maybe we didn't want to do that. So. <laughs> no, you probably that's probably a good idea. I've seen Manchester University doing that lately, Mike have, and guys up. Mike it's and guys pretty up. Cool. Hey, welcome back. Here we are talking sports with Val, and joining us here is the Rochester Zebras head coach, Corey Good. Coach, I know you and Val talk all the time, but I haven't really had a, a chance to uh, congratulate you uh, from last year's sectional championship. Uh, yeah. You know, we, we talked about it when you got that first win, and – then you got the second win, and then you got the championship. That was uh, that was just a fun week over there at Wabash last year. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, it, it was a good time, good memories. Um, you know, hoping that we can we can we can battle this this next uh, two weeks down there again and uh, compete for another one. How does that change the perception of the program? How does it change expectations? Is it kind of one of those things where once you get a taste? It, it becomes addictive. Yeah, you know, I think so for some of these kids. You know, a lot of these kids haven't experienced that. Um, you know, personally, it's kind of been an expectation of mine from from kind of day one, uh, even when we were maybe not so competitive. But, um, you know, as a player under Coach Hooker, we were uh, successful twice there at a sectional um, and then uh, twice for a conference. So it's kind of been – in in my own mind a a baseline from from day one here but yeah for for the kids you know getting getting the taste of that um you know keeps them hungry keeps them coming back and and even going back to you know the first part you said steve with with just winning our first game in a sectional last year uh just helps kind of get the monkey off the back and and uh go in there ready to compete again you talk conference wise unfortunately you know it was a tough one on monday with the wabash here uh you know kind of put them in the driver's seat with with conference but you you got to really tr- find a way because you got to turn around and, and play them again first round at their field so how do you I know you guys had a long 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 talk mm-hmm. after that game how do you get those kids mindset right for when you go over to Chris Rude um you know we need we need good practice reps uh it's something we talked about there too you know we've been playing a lot of baseball if the weather's good you're playing you know well, we were um now with the weather turning a little bit getting outside getting some good practices in getting some reps on some on some things that are obvious things that we need to work at uh but then you know collecting as much data on on your opponent as possible um playing them seeing their tendencies seeing what they like to do um you know so yeah, I, I, I think we, we we started to turn a little corner there after dropping four of our, of our last five um, after a good win on Wednesday. So I think, you know, our, our kids are um, excited and, and going in the right direction, ready to, uh, you know, start, start sectional play here in a week and a half. When the weather gets warm like it is now, and it's, it's kind of ha- seems to happen every year where it gets warmer, now you're playing most every day, and now there seems to be a lot of pitches that accumulate mm-hmm. on the arms of everybody. Mm-hmm. Is that something you have to pay extra attention to this time of year? Because you want to have fresh arms when we finally get to when you get to Wabash on May twenty fifth. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, the other part to that is is we didn't have a lot of warm days earlier to see how these guys were going to respond to warm weather. And you know, when it's forty degrees and you're throwing sixty, eighty pitches, your body um, reacts differently than when it's you know eighty <laughs> degrees out when you throw sixty, eighty pitches. So. Um, excited to kind of see how these guys feel after th- throwing on warmer days. Uh, but, yeah, definitely, we got to make sure that our guys are ramped up and, and fresh and ready to go, um, you know, at the, at the end of May to compete in big games. So, um, you know, starting to dial that in a little bit here and, and really focus on, uh, you know, where we see guys falling that time of the year and making sure they're fresh and ready to go then. Mm-hmm. How's Ethan Medina doing? Yeah. Uh, he seems to be getting along all right. Um, you know, he's got a boot on there. 
Uh, he's going to go back I on noticed that. Tuesday, I think, and get, uh, get a – to have them look at it again. I think there's too much swelling last time to really get an idea of what the root cause is. But we're hoping he's cleared on Tuesday. Um, you know, so as long as that happens, um, we'll be okay. I mean, he was able to gut it out. Yeah. In that Wabash yeah. game got a pinch hit RBI single and then pitched what an inning and two thirds mm-hmm. on the mound with yeah. a bad ankle. That was. Yeah, I, I thought that's, in the, that's uh, almost. Yeah, I, I don't surprised. know if that's Cammy Burkett, but that's pretty close. Yeah, I was kind of surprised when you said he was in a boot because he looked like he was fine. Yeah. when he came in at the end of that game. So yeah, I, yeah, I think it it caught all of us by a little bit of surprise, but um, you know, just hoping he comes back healthy on Tuesday for us. Mm-hmm. I want to ask you about the maybe it's more of a big picture question, but you graduated so many seniors last year: Grant McCarter and Kane Lutz and Brock Beeler and Kyle Reinertz and and Quinn Stasiak. Uh, I wanted to ask you about the attitude of the kids who have come in and kind of filled their spots, Hunter Campbell and Colton Faverda. Uh, how how'd they handle – I mean, have they? how do they handle kind of the expectations of where, okay, now it's your turn? Uh, mm-hmm. how, how well do they handle that in, in terms of their work ethic and to get ready for this season? Because I, I, you know, I remember that Delphi game, which was your season opener. It seemed like those kids, Luke Hunting, I think he'd probably throw into that mix mm-hmm. – Guys were just seemingly ready to go. Mm-hmm. Braden Zink, maybe even too. Mm-hmm. The guys who were like, "Yeah, we won sectional last year, but I, I don't want this to be viewed as a rebuilding year. I'm going to contribute, and we're going to be just as good, if not better, than we were last year." Yeah. They seem to be kids on a mission. Yeah, they are. Mm-hmm. Um, they're ready for their time. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we've we, we, we've kind of seen that at different times throughout this year where. Um, these guys may sit a game, play the next, and when they play that next game, they're having a huge at bat for us. You know, mm-hmm. Luke Hunting on Wednesday night, um, you know, dinged up in that Valley game a few weeks ago and took him a while to get back and healthy and, you know, plug him in and off yeah. he goes. Um, so, yeah, those kids are, are motivated. Because um, that seems to be part of building a really good program when you look at the Delphi's and the Wapahani's. The programs that are really good mm-hmm. year after year after year is that yeah I mean kids graduate but there's the next kid who's ready to go and is kind of chomping at the bit to yeah it, it's it you know we look out here right yeah. now we got JV guys going and mm-hmm. this is important stuff you mm-hmm. know these guys got to be ready to play for us here in the next year or two or whatever yeah. it is um, so you know we talk about uh, you know coaching styles or, or what we're working on in practice and you know some of these guys that play baseball all year around get a little frustrated with how practices look early in the year. And it's, um, you know, I tell them, hey, come back in three years, and if you want me to coach the way you want us to early in the year, come back and watch these guys and and see how they perform. Mm -hmm. Um, And it's probably not going to be real good because these guys need to work on um, some things that maybe, you know, a guy that plays – 365 days a year doesn't need to work on. Mm -hmm. Uh, So everybody needs different things uh, that they need to work on in a a practice. Which is why I think being a baseball coach might be the hardest of all the sports because everybody needs something a little different. Yeah, mm-hmm. from their from their coaching. Yeah, mm. yeah, it, it, it definitely is a challenge, mm-hmm. um, and and especially when we progress and get halfway through the season and get some data and and some, uh, where does everybody stand? And mm-hmm. and that's what I talk to these guys about a lot is don't look at the guy next to you to see what they're working on because what you need to work on is probably something different. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so you know I think that's a challenge at times, and and you know I when we talk about something specifically, you know, lately it's been plate discipline and, mm-hmm. and, and it doesn't mean right. it's all 20 guys on the team, but it's a majority of them. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, yeah, rebuilding, getting, getting guys ready to go. So when it's, it's, it's a plug and play. Um, and, and we have that, you know, you, you watch Wednesday's game and Medina's on the bench and uh, with an injury and, and Huff's there just, you know, like you said, making sure he's ready to go at the end of the year. And, these guys went and, and played a really good game against a, a solid McConaughey team, and and especially after losing four of our last five and getting a little funk there, being able to you know bounce out of that and compete you know through through eight in, eight innings. So we've got guys that can do that. We're going to mm-hmm. continue to have guys that can do that, um, which is exciting for me. Mm-hmm. I want to ask about Tarek. It seems like his passion for the game is just. I don't think I've ever met a kid with that kind of passion for the game. And you see it just in the little, like the little fundamental things he does, how he fields a ground ball, uh, how he takes a pitch, how he kind of looks it into the glove. It just seems like, am I am I crazy here? Is that no. something Tarek has a kind of, he has a unique kind of passion for the game, and he, 
he really kind of – I think he enjoys putting in the work to get better. Oh, yeah. And then it shows on the field. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, work-wise, nobody works harder than Tarek at baseball. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, whatever we do, he always wants more. Yeah. You know, and uh, we're hitting ground balls yesterday, and, mm-hmm. you know, it's, I don't know, 90-whatever. It's hot. And we went through our whole practice, and it was, all right, go get a drink. And Tarek's still sh- standing at shortstop saying, somebody hit me balls. <laughs> you know, and it's like, mm-hmm. go take a break for a second. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm but, tired. I need a break. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I, we are. Yeah. Um, but no, is he a better uh, defensive shortstop than you? Yeah, yeah, I think so. <laughs> okay. You know, and and the quickness wise too. That's mm-hmm. what a lot of people don't get. A lot of people are shortstops growing up until mm-hmm. you get to high school or college or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. And you know, just that quick twitch, that lateral movement, um, quick hands. You know, he has all of those things. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, his passion for the game is is probably second to none. You know, um, I feel like I I still have that, but it's hard, coaching wise to player wise. Um, but, you know, he, he, he – leaders lead, and he's a leader, and people follow him, mm-hmm. you know. So if that means he's going four for four and pitching six innings on the mound or, you know, going 0 for four and struggling, he's going to be the leader, and we're going to follow him. Um, you know, so that can be a lot at times for, for people. Um, but, you know, that every team has that person, and, and he's our guy on the baseball field. Um, but – yeah, his passion for the game his and his baseball IQ, which is something we've talked about a lot uh, as a staff and to our players, is, you know, people don't watch baseball like you or I or, you know, what, what people did in the past. And um, just that, that, that the baseball IQ of, of knowing when to hold it and not throw it to first or knowing when to take that extra base or, uh, you know, hey, they're in the front of the box, they may bunt here. Those things that you don't necessarily – uh, you learn. It's just kind of you. You either have it or you don't. And and some of those things aren't aren't great examples there. But um, you know, th- there is a baseball IQ to 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 the side of the p- game of baseball that's really really important and that it is tough to teach if you don't already have that instinct. How would you describe Tanner Reinert's baseball IQ? Uh, yeah, for a freshman to step right in and yeah. Uh, it, it kind of looks like a veteran out there. I think we've we've forgotten that he's a freshman. Yeah. yeah, yeah, he does. I mean, you know, he has been one of the things that I've been most impressed with him about is just his composure on the mound. Um, you know, we've put him in some some big games, and he has just just been locked in and and so focused, and didn't look like the moment was too big for him. Um, you know, offensively and defensively at times, you know, maybe you've seen that just a little bit, but on the mound, he has just been rock solid. Um, just not letting things get to you. And and that's where the one position that if any spot is going to get to you, it's on the mound. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, I mean, he's been great. You know, there's little things that, you know, I told him the other day is kind of what we just said. There's things that I have to get you better at that, are completely different than everybody else. You know, mm-hmm. we have to coach some people. We, we coach all 20 of these guys a little differently. Yeah. Um, and, and finding things that he can get better at. And I don't know, there was a game earlier this year that we played, and mm-hmm. um, he just DH'd, and I said, stay on my hip and, you know, just learn the game, th- you know, with me and through me. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, really excited. I think, excited he, I to think he's going to get even better at kind of turning and burning on a fastball. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's uh, been one of the big things I mean, that I've seen. I mean, he's not bad at it right now, but nope. he's going to get really good at it, I think, in the next year or two. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mm-hmm. mean, it wasn't long ago that uh, he was hitting over 600. Yeah. You know, as a freshman through I don't know how many games it was, but that's uh, unheard of. Um, so, you know, he's – yeah, he's definitely going to get better. No question about that. And, and that's you know, the other part to this that we tell these guys is everybody's always got something to get better at. So find out your weakness and, and get better at that. How does his mentality for the game compare to his brother Kyle? You, you know, they are different kids, uh, obviously. But, you know, they're um, – I think Tanner's a little more emotional. Yeah. A, a little more. Yeah, maybe. Um, Kyle kind of l- – kind of showed a bit of himself last year toward the end. Yeah. I think Tanner already is kind of there. Yeah, yeah. No, I can see that. Am you, I crazy here? <laughs> no, you okay. probably have more interactions okay. Okay. with him than I do. So. Yeah. 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 Kyle um, Kyle kind of came out of his shell a little bit last year. His but. motor never stops. You yeah. know, that's Kyle. I mean, he is – he will – he. he Similar things we said about Tarek. You know, I just think he's one of those guys who just work, 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 work. And not that Tanner doesn't do those mm-hmm. things. He definitely works hard. 
Um, but just, you know, hey, if it's time to sit back and relax, let's sit back and relax. Um, and uh, that I think Kyle, and, and I think this will come with Tanner and you get going, but just a little bit more competitive. Mm-hmm. Um you know, really working on those weaknesses. You know, Tanner's always that guy that wants to take more swings. It's like, Tanner, <laughs> I know you want to take some more swings, but, hey, let's work on this instead mm-hmm. of taking more swings. So let's go work on taking two hops, throws to third base, and knocking them down and, and keeping them in front of you uh, instead of one more round of BP. Right. Um, but, you know, there's a lot of similarities, too. I mean, so he's, like the, he's, like the, he's like the Ted Williams of this team? Yeah, he wants to hit a lot, <laughs> you know, and, and, and that's fun. And, and I, I, I remember Isn't there an old story when Ted Williams was a manager of the Washington Nationals and one of the coaches was kind of like, let's work on rundown plays in spring training and – they worked on it for like 10 minutes. He was like, ah, oh, let's go hit. Let's go hit. <laughs> that sounds like that. I just sent these guys a thing on Instagram the other day about Ted Williams and talking about plate discipline and where he hit and what hot zones his, you know, he had and, you know, not swinging at pitches outside of that zone unless you had two strikes on you and, and some of those things. So it's funny you mentioned that a little bit. So uh, talk about uh, a little bit your schedule coming up because you got, uh, you got a tough schedule here before we get into sectional play. You got John Glenn coming in tonight, and then you got three road games next week. You know, you got two big conference games, and then you go to Bremen, who, uh, you know, is always right, a. Just also go to Winnemac tomorrow. Mm-hmm. That's uh, right. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I forgot so about the Winnemac four, game. Four in a row on the road yeah. starting yeah. tomorrow. Yeah, it feels like these past couple of weeks have just been a week after week of a, of a little gauntlet here. Um, but, yeah, you know, John Glenn tonight coming in here. I mean, no secret, they're having a tremendous season. Uh, I, th- you know, their offense is extremely powerful. Um, you know, so hoping to go out and compete with these guys tonight. And Coach Hooker always told me that John Nadolny was one of the guys he he just respected more than just about any any other coach. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and he's been at it for what at least twenty five years. He has. I mean, I I know he was the coach when I would go over there and play. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think he was the coach at South Bend Riley before he got to Glen. Yep, yeah. Yep. Um. Yeah. You know, a lot of respect for him. He's always got a very good program. You know, had, had seen this young talent kind of go through here these past couple years. And, um, you know, the Stevens boy, uh, Hannah kid, mm-hmm. you know, they're, 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 they got some, some players going up through there right mm-hmm. now and in basketball and everything up there. Mm-hmm. So uh, be a good, good, good match tonight. Um, and then, yeah, Winnemac tomorrow, they're in control. The HNAC, they went out mm-hmm. and they win it all. They've got um, nine seniors and you have only one. <laughs> yeah. So it's, it's yeah, an experience that's a standpoint. Battle. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then, like you said, going in next week, Peru, go to Peru on Monday, go to North Miami never on Wednesday. Never an easy place to win. Nope, yeah. nope, never, neither one. Bremen, and then, you know, we finish the year every year at uh, Twin Lakes Co- Classic. So mm-hmm. Twin Lakes, Lebanon, us, and Valley. So uh, really good opponents the rest of the way out, uh, straight, into con- straight into sectional play. So, um, you know, you need to take every game, compete, get better, and uh, prepare for uh, – May 25th. What's this year been like for Evan Elliott being the only senior on this team? He was, al- he was also the only senior on the basketball team. Yeah. Um, you know, j- really good, mm-hmm. I think. I mean, Evan's just a great kid. He's a great person to, to have on your program. and uh, He's a tough competitor. He is. I mean, he's, a, he's, kinda he's so it. level-headed, yeah. too. I mean, yeah. you never see him get too high or too mm-hmm. low. Um, you know, he'll do anything you ask of him. I mean, he – every game he pitches, it's, Evan, how you feel the next day? Like I didn't pitch, you know. I mean, he just – and if you watch him out here and the way he prepares, there, he throws long toss longer than anybody else out here. And, and I truly believe that's one reason why his arm reacts the way it does is because long toss, you know, and, and the, the arm care that's involved there. Um, but, yeah, great competitor, great kid. His leadership has been tremendous this year. Uh, which is something that, you know, going into this year and losing all those seniors that I was a little concerned about. But he's really stepped up in, in, with, with that. Um, and, you know, he's just he's going to be missed. You know, he's been part of this program, played varsity baseball as a freshman. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, didn't get a year as a sophomore. Uh, but then these past two years, you know, I mean, we've, we've leaned on him every game. Um, so definitely going to be missed. Great kid. You know, just he'd run through a wall for anybody. You talk about, you know, Val was talking about the group of seniors that graduated. Um, is there any residual? Because if you if you think back, it was just two years ago, we didn't play. Mm-hmm. Uh, so these juniors, you know, they missed their entire freshman year. Evan missed his entire sophomore year. 
is there any lingering effects of that or is it kind of something that you've been able to put behind you and, and uh, you know, move forward? I def- I'm, cur- I'm curious to know that too because there was kind of, was there kind of a summer season in 2020? Uh, was there kind yeah, of a travel yeah, season? Yeah, mm-hmm. we did. We got together. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think that was maybe, maybe we got in there in 19 in the weight room too. But, I mean, we had a great fall, winter, whatever, off mm-hmm. season, let's call it. Um, and then, you know, Friday before practice, boom, cancel, it, mm-hmm. the season's over. So, yeah, there's still there's still effects that, that, that I feel just from – you mentioned experience earlier, and that's the big thing. You know, mm-hmm. having these juniors with another year of baseball, whether it be JV or varsity, is, is huge. Um, baseball's a funny game, as we've kind of hinted around at here, and um, – there's a lot of failure. There's a lot of ups and downs. There's a lot of swings in the game that's that's uh, kind of tough to handle unless you do it a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, so I definitely think that there, there's still some some effects from that, and it's just mainly experience um, with that and, and just being coming more familiar with our program. You know, the relationships that we build with these kids after year one, year two, year three. Um, you know, and, and we weren't around most of these guys at all um, in, in the 20 season. So, you know, yeah, it, it's still there. You know, after next year, it, 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 I guess it is gone. Um, but just that experience and game situational stuff was is the big things I see. Well, we'd love to. I'm sure if I let Val, we'd be here all night. The game would be going on, and Val's still interviewing you. But uh, we probably uh, ought to let you go. Oh, and geez, it makes me sound like a loud mouth. <laughs> no, but you, you, you know, when you start talking baseball, I mean, you, especially you two, I, I know it can, uh, it can last. But uh, we talked about we talked about Tony Gwynn for about five minutes the other day yeah. during the Wabash game. Not that your game wasn't really thrilling, but <laughs> <laughs> it was Tony Gwynn's birthday. We had to okay, we had to say yeah, something about it for sure. Well, what game was it? You had a whole inning about a guy that played in 1938. From, yeah, uh, I was talking about Billy Jurgis. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's like, okay. One of the great Cubs all-time yeah. double play combos, Billy Herman and Billy Jurgis. Come on, everybody knows that. Yeah, <laughs> and I just sit over here and shake my head. Uh-huh, yeah, sure, yeah, 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 okay, sure. But, uh, no, it, it's great. It's been fun to cover you guys this year, and, and we're hoping, you know, that uh, we can have several games again over Chris Rude because yep. I told Val that uh, that is my favorite and, you know, nothing against Bob Copeland besides the net. I know you guys <laughs> love the net, but it's it's yeah. pain in my neck. But um, Chris Rude is just uh, – it's kind of my favorite place to uh, film for uh, baseball. Yeah, it's yeah. a good setting for, for fans, and I'm sure you guys can just see everything from up there too. Yeah, I mean, so, yeah, yeah, you just kind of look down. You're almost looking over the backstop, uh, yeah. you know, into the field. It's just – it's kind of a, yeah. a yeah, really I, neat uh, setup. I'd say Plymouth is probably the only one to be even close to Wabash. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Plymouth is pretty nice too. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah, like you said, I mean, you've enjoyed it. We've enjoyed mm-hmm. having you guys cover the cover the games and um, – you know, it means a lot. It's cool to go back and, and watch these a couple days or a week or month or year after they, that they've happened. Right. And, um, yeah, it's really cool. We appreciate what you guys do, too. All right. Oh, well, thanks, Coach Good. We're going to take a break. We'll come back. We'll talk some softball here on Talking Sports with Val. Hey, welcome back. We are talking sports with Val. And uh, let's see what time we got here. 3.23. We got about uh, about 15 minutes left, Val. So let's, uh, let's slide into some softball talk. Mm-hmm. And uh, so for uh, the uh, TRC, obviously North Miami kind of has a stranglehold on the conference. Conoqua holding tough, though, with that uh, win the other night over at uh, Fansler against the um, the Zebras. Uh, Rochester, um, you know, right there in the middle of the pack, sitting at three and four. And, uh, you know, Valley, uh, they're holding their own, too, five and two. Yeah, North Miami, they, they just don't even allow a run in these conference games. I mean, mm-hmm. Lauren Duncan has just been phenomenal. Uh, they're probably the favorite, right? I mean, it's, you know, again, you have, like North Miami's chances of beating Wabash on Monday night, and it might come down to the Lady Z's maybe being a spoiler. If you're a McConaughey fan, you'll be rooting hard for Wabash on Monday and Rochester on Wednesday. Yeah. Uh, I, was at the, I was at the Rochester game against LaVille last night. They won 15-11. to 11. It was a nutty game. Rochester was up 6-1. to one. Going into the bottom of the fifth, LaVille scored four in the bottom of the fifth. They scored two in the bottom of the sixth to take a 7-6 to six lead on back-to-back bases, loaded walks. And then Rochester comes back with nine in the top of the seventh. Wow. 
to go up 15 to seven, and then Laville comes back with four in the bottom of the seventh, and it got a little got a little hairy in the bottom of the seventh that I don't think people were expecting. But mm-hmm. uh, again, it was warm. Uh, Quincy Blodgett is the, was the Laville pitcher. I think she pitched her heart out, but I think she just got tired there at the end. And the ladies, he is, and again, this is a team, even though they have no seniors, it doesn't mean they're inexperienced. Uh, you know, Sydney Hawes had two big hits in that seventh inning. Keaton Doran didn't start, or Keaton, what do I say? Let me start over again. Dara Strasser didn't start the game, but she had two big walks in the seventh inning. Um, you know, Emma Sell's got a bunt down, and there's a throwing error in the bunt, and two runs scored on that play. Uh, Kylie Coleman had a big two-run homer. She also had a big sacrifice fly. Emma Hadishaw only went one for three last night, but the hit was a big triple in that seventh inning. Mm-hmm. So it was it was a nice job. Uh, Callie Watson missed Wednesday's game against McConaughey due to yeah, illness. Was she was ill. Okay. She came back last night. She DP'd, but she didn't catch. Uh, okay. They didn't want her catching. She was in that hot weather wearing all the gear. But mm-hmm. she DP'd. And actually, who called the game from the bucket? Callie Watson. Did she? Yeah, she <laughs> called awesome. the game, and yeah. Olivia Powell was looking over toward her. So yeah. a way to keep uh, Callie involved in the game. But. Yeah, Rochester now 8-7 and seven on the year. They've got a busy week ahead coming up. They go to Peru on Monday. They go to North Miami on Wednesday. And, again, the game should have some TRC title implications, at least for North Miami. And then Thursday at South Bend Clay. And then Saturday they go to Northwestern. I think it's a three-team tournament with Northwestern and Culver Academy, kind of a three-way doubleheader. Okay. Uh, unfortunately, just no room to fit in some makeup games, even though they've got plenty of room for them. Mm. I mean, because remember the Carroll game, the Pioneer game, the Eastern game. Yeah. I mean, they all got wiped off the map, but you just, Con- just, conference stuff is going to take precedence with all those schools, right? With yeah. all those schools, so it's just frustrating. I, w- I just wish the season were a week longer. Yeah, just yeah. to to have a just to have a makeup week. It's uh, that, I mean, that's another part of the uh, that's another part of the issue here. I, I think the season is too short, so you can't get in makeup games. Right. Well, and and this year has just been crazy anyway. Because mm-hmm. you know, and I was going to say it with Coach Good, you know, talking about the cold weather to the hot weather, and it seemed like it happened overnight. We went from forty to eighty-five mm-hmm. overnight, and the next thing you know, now you're you're trying to deal with uh, with heat and mm-hmm. you know humidity, and the humidity obviously has been the big thing, right? It's not the heat; it's the humidity. Yeah. And uh, boy, has it been humid. <laughs> Yeah. So uh, hopefully but, next uh, week it sounds like it might level off a little bit. And, and who had the game-winning infield single, the game-winning RBI infield single that put them ahead for good on the top of the seventh last night? Maddie Heinzman. Yeah. Just her second game of the year batting, and that that was just I just felt great for right. Maddie to do good. that. Yeah. You know, she really needed to make contact and put the ball in play in that situation, and she did. And good for uh, her. Yeah. yeah. Throw home was late, and that put Rochester up eight to seven. And then I mentioned give a shout out to Haley Durkis too. Two hits, two RBIs at the plate, and she threw two runners out on the bases. She's coming she, out she threw, strong, yeah. She started the game in left field, threw a runner out at the plate trying to score from second and a single. Mm. Then in the uh, bottom of the uh, fifth inning, there was a girl trying to – she singled. She was trying to stretch it into a double, and Haley was playing right field at this point, and she threw her out at second. Wow. So just a freshman and really yeah. really making a bigger, bigger impact both offensively and defensively. Yeah, yeah. She's she's come on strong, really done well. I mean, that you, yeah. you talk about, you know, with – the baseball team, you know, they've got a strong junior class, strong freshman class. Same thing with the softball team. Strong junior class, strong freshman class. I don't know what it is about the mm-hmm. freshmen and, and, and juniors here at Rochester, but, uh, boy, they've got uh, a great class of kids on in both of those. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, no seniors uh, for the softball team, only one senior for the, for the baseball team. So, um, I don't know. Seniors, you need to, you know. Yeah. So, next year's senior classes will obviously be big, but um, – so uh, that's the uh, TRC. Um, you know, All right, I want to give a shout out to Valley too. Seventeen, seventeen to two in five innings over Marion last night, and Molly Moriarty hit her eighth homer of the year. Eighth homer, that's solid. Yeah, and uh, you know that comes after a ten to two win over Southwood on Wednesday. Yeah. So a tough loss to McConaughey on Monday, but they've come back with two nice wins in a row. And this is a Valley team they're ranked number fifteen in Class Two A, and you'd have to think. If they're, I mean, they're the only team that's in Sectional Thirty Seven that's got any ranking recognition this week. So you'd. I guess they're the favorite coming yeah, in. Uh, yeah. I, I know uh, this is a team that's been a little bit up and down of late, but, again, this is a team that's probably the most solid lineup top to bottom. Yeah. Well, we're going to have that uh, game one, and uh, we're, we're going to definitely have the, the second uh, round game as well because either Rochester or Valley is going to win. So mm-hmm. uh, we've already got those applied and uh, ex- you know approved. So uh, right. I think yeah. that's going to be a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday sectional. Assuming that the weather is fine, so the Rochester Tuesday, Valley, Wednesday. 
The Rochester mm. Valley game will be on Monday at 5. The winner will play Whitco Tuesday at 5. And the winner of that game will play in the sectional final on Wednesday. Wednesday? Yes. Boy, that's going to throw a wrench in schedules mm -hmm. with uh, baseball starting. Baseball will start on Wednesday, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. I was hoping it would be Thursday. Right. But, mm -hmm. uh, normally they try and uh, alter those a little so they're not uh, simultaneous. So that will be an interesting uh, thing if, mm -hmm. if we end up having a Rochester Valley in the championship because mm -hmm. uh, we're definitely going to do the Wabash and Rochester game. Mm -hmm. Uh, who's your North Conference? Uh, of course, uh, you know, it's going to come down to the game next week. We knew it probably would with uh, Kasten uh, visiting Pioneer over at Herc Hoffman. And one team is ranked number two in Class 1A, and the other team is ranked number one in Class 2A. Yeah, that's going to be a dandy of a game. It's going to be senior night uh, over there as well. And, you know, uh, Kasten got it done in a big way against Winnemac the other night uh, at Kasten. Yeah, and 13 to 1 in five innings, and then 11 to 1 in five innings over Triton on Thursday. And McKenna Middleton homered in both games, and she is a freshman who is coming on strong. Yeah. Haley, you know, Middleton and Haley Logan went back to back in that uh, Winnemac game off a really good pitcher in Ella Gearhart. Yeah. They had four homers in that game? They had four homers yeah. in that game. Then Isabel Scales and Maddie Smith went back-to-back -back later and, in the and game. And you said that homer by Scales was one of the longest hit balls you've seen in softball? Yeah. I mean, that was uh, – yeah, that was gone the moment it left the bat. Yeah. I mean, and that was – that was yeah, that was gone by plenty. And then it was funny, Maddie Smith, she bat she batted left-handed the first two times up, kind of in slap mode, and then yeah. third time up she hits a home run hitting right-handed. Hit right-handed. Uh, Pioneer doing one of the weirdest uh, little things tonight as far as games go. They are going to be at Culver Academy for mm -hmm. a full game. They're going to get on the bus after that game, head up to Newton Park. Mm -hmm. 8 o'clock, they've got to play the bottom of the fifth Yeah. Uh, for a conference game that, you know, it got postponed. That was back when yeah. the weather was what the weather was for so long. And mm -hmm. they're up by 12, I think. Was it like fourteen to two? I think it was something like that. Yeah. yeah. So basically, they, they got ahead. Yeah. yeah. Basically, they got to play the bottom of the fifth, and uh, then they then they'll get the ten run if they right. don't let uh, Laville score. That's a Laville team that had fifteen hits last night against Rochester. They uh, offensively, I think they're pretty good. Yeah. Uh, uh, Halen Kwiatkowski is their center fielder. She's a good player, leadoff hitter, good speed. Yeah. She made a phenomenal catch to Rob Sidney Hawes last night. I think I tweeted that it was one of the best catches I've ever seen. I, I think it was. I mean. She was playing center field, running top speed with her back to the infield, and she re she's left-handed, so she reaches out with her right hand okay. and catches it with her back to the infield, full speed. Wow. Yeah. So just like uh, just like a receiver going down yeah. the sideline. Right? Oh, it was it was impressive. Yeah. Huh. Uh, real quick, uh, we didn't talk about Hoosier North uh, baseball. Um, boy, it's an exciting race coming down to the end. Winnemac setting it 10-1. and one. Great win over Knox last night. Knox scores two in the bottom of the first, and that's all they get. Winnemac comes back to win 6-2. to two. Yeah, so they got another game with Knox. They still have uh, two big games right. after that with Pioneer right. and Knox, Judson. Knox comes to Winnemac today for yeah. the second game of that set. And then they've got, yeah, they've they still have to one more. They still have one more game against Pioneer and one more game against Judson. You know, uh, but the, what a win for Pioneer last right. night! Twelve to eleven over Judson. It was seven seven going into the top of the seventh. Judson scores four, and Pioneer comes back with five in the bottom half. Yeah, to win that. it looked like it was all over. Yeah, you know, after the top of the seventh, and and uh, they get five. And bizarre game. Pioneer had twelve runs. They had three hits, but they drew ten walks. Yeah. And that's over a, a really good North Judson team. Yeah. You know, they're sitting at 8-3. and three, So, uh, you know, Kasten, they, they are 9-2. and two. Uh, they've, got, uh, they've got a pretty favorable schedule. They go to Culver, and then they have the two-game two set with Triton. Right. They beat Culver 25-1 to one in five innings last night. So they got another game against Culver tonight at Culver, and then they have two games against Triton next week. One game on Tuesday and then one game on Thursday. Okay. So remember, not back-to-back? -back? Yeah, because remember, Kasten doesn't play sports on Wednesday, so. Okay. So, yeah, Kasten's still uh, still alive here. You know, Winnemac, like we said, they, they've they still got three really tough conference games. So, uh, you know, yeah. it's, it's wide open. Even 7-4 and four Pioneer, you know, I mean, there's a backdoor chance. Not really, but maybe. It would take a lot. It but, would take a lot, you know, yeah. But, uh, you know, they're, they're going to be, uh, you know, going into that sectional there at Kasten, I mean – you yeah. know, you gotta you gotta think. Hey, we're gonna be competitive, right? Right. I was at that Pioneer casting game on Tuesday, and Pioneer played their hearts out. I mean, this team is 
this team is fully engaged with Coach Hardy, and he's doing a, a very good job with this team. It's just uh, the offense has been a little up and down. Um, you know, the, the, the Pioneer casting game was just a crazy game. It, it, both teams had opportunities and couldn't quite cash in. It was, you know, uh, you know the, the, the play that Caleb Sweet made in that at the bottom of the eighth inning, Talon's either up, runner at third, nobody out, and Coach Mollenkopf calls for the suicide squeeze which means the guy from third is coming down the line as the pitch is being thrown. So if you're the bunter, you have one job, get the ball down. It mm-hmm. doesn't have to be a good bunt, just get it down on the ground. Right. And Talon Zider, it pops it a little bit up in the air, and Caleb Sweet makes an incredible diving catch right in front of him. Get, just gets the ball over the ground, gets the ball off the ground, and once that happens, the runner at third is dead meat, and Caleb mm-hmm. just gets on over, he runs over to third base for an unassisted double play. Yeah. But it was that was a phenomenal play. Gavin Clem made a throw from center field that was outstanding to gun a guy down at the bottom at the plate in the bottom of the seventh inning that would have won the game for Caston. So those Pioneer kids played their heart out. It was just a tough loss. Jackson Wrenchler eventually won it in the bottom of the tenth with a walk off RBA single. But it, yeah, I mean Pioneer, you know Pioneer drew a tough North Miami team. That's going to be a good game right off the bat. First first game of the sectional. Yeah, Caston. So real quick here, a little uh, scheduling update. So what we got, obviously, uh, we're going to be here. Val's going to start it off, and I'll be back when I get done with the uh, filming at uh, Logan. Uh, Rochester Baseball versus John Glenn tonight in the morning. We'll be up at Argus with the uh, Dragons hosting the Cast and Comets. Yeah, tough so, loss for the Lady Dragons last night. Lost an extra innings to Culver Academy. Yeah, nine to seven and in eight innings. Haven't got a chance to do a uh, Argus softball game yet, so that's going to be uh, tomorrow morning. That's a 10 a.m. I think first pitch, and then we'll be back uh, uh, in Argus on Monday with the uh, baseball team versus West Central. Um, and then on Tuesday night, uh, we mentioned that big game with Pioneer and Caston. Uh, we're going to try and film that. Obviously, we can't. We've tried live over there. We're going to try and film that. I'm going to be there for senior night, and then I'm going to try and make it down to uh, watch the track sectionals at uh, Northwestern uh, if I can get down there. And then um, got some baseball at Caston on Thursday versus Triton. And then uh, that'll uh, lead us into the following week then with the uh, sectionals. Mm-hmm. So it's uh, it's coming down to that time already, and uh, we are out of time for our uh, episode here today. Shout out to Macy Brown, her team at Oakland playing Northern Kentucky as we speak in the conference semifinals. Oakland won the conference title. Good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I know she's had a, uh, a great sophomore season. Yep. Beat so. Green Bay yesterday in the first game, playing Northern Kentucky right now as we speak. Good for her. So we will be back next week with more Talking Sports. We'll be back here at 5 with uh, Rochester Baseball versus John Glenn. Should be a good one here from Bob Copeland Field. Thanks for tuning in. Talking Sports with Val. We'll see you next week. Mm-hmm.